Hello friends, in this video we shall discuss with respect to the previous year paper of UGC NET Electronic Science which has been conducted by NTA on June 2024. The paper consisted of paper 1 that is general paper which is for 100 marks, 50 questions and paper 2 we are going to consider Electronic Science which is for 200 marks, the number of questions was 100 in number. To keep the video very much short, I am going to discuss from question number 1 to question number 25. Let us move on to the first question. In the first question what they are asking is, match the following. In the list one they have talked about LED. LED stands for light emitting diode and in the second one they have sp spoken with respect to avalanche photodiode, laser, light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation and in the fourth option they have talked about pin diode. On the list two. They have talked about heavy doping, stimulated emission, microwave switch and PN junction. Now, as the acronym of laser indicates, light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So, it is a stimulated emission. LED is going to emit or it is going to obey spontaneous emission. So, for C option, the corresponding option is 2, nothing but stimulated emission. And LED which is made up of PN junction. Right? And now look at the things. Havalanche photodiode is a heavily doped. But if I am considering zener diode and tunnel diode, it is a very much highly doped when compared to avalanche photodiode. Right? Next, in the case of pin diode, in the case of pin photodiode, where we are going to use is we are going to use as microwave switch. So the corresponding option that is going to follow is option 4 is correct. In the second question what they are asking is, on the list 1 they have given the numbers, on the list 2 they are asking what is the type of rectifiers. Now look at the things, what is the definition of transformer utilization factor? What is the amount of DC level you have obtained to the AC quantity that is being injected, right? So that ratio you are going to take. If I am talking about a half wave rectifier, the amount of rectification, nothing but the process of converting from AC to pulsating DC, the amount of conversion is very very less and the better one will be full wave rectifier. The better one of that one will be bridge rectifier and the better one of that one will be three phase rectifier. So, for the half wave rectifier, it is a 0.287, nothing but 28.7%. And in the case of full wave bridge rectifier, it is a 0.693 or 69.3%. And in the case of a bridge rectifier, it is a 0.812 or 81.2%. At last, in the case of three phase full wave rectifier, it is a 0.955. So, Based on this, you can go for option 1. In the third question, see this is a simple question and a tricky question. What they are asking is, say suppose if you want to bias an SCR or a thyristor, what is the condition? First what we are going to do is, we are going to apply biasing across anode to cathode terminal. So, when you start applying a biasing across anode to cathode terminal, junction J1 and J3 will be in a forward bias state. But junction J2 will be in a forward blocking state. So, in order to overcome it, what you are going to do? You are going to inject a gate pulse. Now, look at the things. Say suppose if you are applying the potential across anode to cathode, what is the condition on junctions? Junction J1 and J3 is forward bias, junction J2 is a reverse bias, nothing but the other way is a forward blocking mode. But what they are asking in this question is when it is on or conducting. See when it is conducting nothing but the current has to flow from anode to cathode or the other way of current if you are speaking it is from cathode to anode the current has to flow. So, Junction J1 and J3 is forward bias as well as junction J2 is also being forward bias. Junction J2 is also being forward bias. So, 
all the junctions junction j1 j2 j3 is uh, followed by us nothing but option 4 is going to follow in the fourth question what they are asking is the laplace transform for a time domain they are asking see first is uh, what are the test signals you will be having unit step signal impulse then ramp function then parabolic functions these things will be there see for impulse how you are going to represent delta of t you are going to represent see for delta of t what is the laplace transform one is the laplace transform and for the unit step signal or the right handed signal starting from zero what is the laplace transform one divided by s or unit step is also called as a b side function right for this laplace transform you are going to get one by s next for triangular pulses what you are going to get 1 divided by s square for parabolic what you are going to get 2 divided by s square you are going to get now for the case of for the case of polynomial it is a n factorial divided by s power n plus 1 you are going to get what is the laplace transform for cos and sin see cos means in the numerator you are going to get s term sin means you will not be getting the s term it is vice versa like this you can remember so for cos you are going to get s divided by s square plus omega square and for the sine you are going to get omega divided by s square plus omega square so for this if i am going i am going to get option 2 as correct answer in the fifth question again this question is from digital electronics what they are asking is in the list one they have talked about uh, the type of a to d converter and in the list two they have talked about the specifications of it now let us uh, briefly discuss with the things see in the case of counter type it is the simplest one now here you will be having a d to a converter and here the measured value will be greater than the true value here the measured value will be greater than the true value this one thing you have to remember in uh, all the other a to d converters you will be getting the measured value which is less than the true value right next let us talk about flash converter flash converter is the super up nothing but the fastest converter but you will be having uh, or you are going to use a 2 power n minus 1 hop amp circuits so the number of comparator circuits are more in number circuit is bulk circuit is bulk speed of execution requires one clock cycles or few clock cycles you can take or few nanoseconds you can write next successive approximation register type which is a practically used a to d converter and it is the simplest a to d converter conversion time is fixed conversion time is fixed next if i am speaking with respect to dual slope or integrating type what do you know with respect to dual slope or integrating type the conversion time is the slowest one 2 power n plus 1 minus 1 times of t clock so this is the conversion time you are going to get why we are going to use in the case of multimeter mills it is going to overcome the hum effect it is going to overcome the hum effect so with this basic knowledge let us attend this question now in the case of counter type it is the simplest a to d converter and the flash type is a flash type is a most expensive why it is most expensive means you are going to make use of 2 power n minus 1 times of comparators so this much of huge comparators you're going to use and in the case of a, a dual slope type in the case of dual slope type it is the slowest a to d converter and successive approximation is widely used so based on this option one is going to follow in the sixth question what they're asking is what is the use of this uh, bx register see accumulator ax and bx will be there what is the use of cx register default counter or the implied counter we are going to tell in the case of 16 bit we are going to make use of cx register but in the case of 8 bit we are going for either cl register or ch register and in the case of a dx where we are going to use say suppose if i want to store a mac macro macro in the sense of print of message if i want to store a message at the time i'm going to make use of this dx register Say suppose if I am performing 16 bit by 16 bit multiplication at that time the lower 16 bit result will be stored in where AX register upper one will be stored in DX register. Say suppose if I am performing 32 bit by 16 bit division operation at that time 
the quotient will be stored in ax register and remainder will be stored in dx register so with this knowledge let us attend this question default counter it can't be so if default counter it can't be means so fourth option you can easily eliminate that is all of the above next destination operand they have specified destination operand you can specify any things of your choice you can specify ax bx cx register or memory anything and everything even index register these things are possible right but the main purpose of using this bx register is it is used for offset storage to form a physical address let me give some examples please go through it in the seventh question what they are asking is they are asking us to arrange the interrupts in a descending order nothing but highest priority to lowest priority they are asking so the highest priority will be given for what non maskable interrupts hardware interrupts or reset then later on internal interrupts and software interrupts will be given the lower priority so based on this if i am getting into non maskable interrupts are the one need to be serviced or need to be served as and when the interrupt occurs the isr has to be executed the current execution of the job need to be suspended nothing but the current execution of that instruct the current instruction need to be executed the next instruction should not be executed it has to get into isr need to be serviced for or the service should be given for non maskable interrupt right next hardware interrupt next priority will be given for reset then it will be given for internal interrupt and then for software interrupt so based on this if i am getting into i am going to get option b as correct answer eighth question you see what they are asking is we have to find the incorrect statement so for this let us get into basics uh, p rom pal pla in the case of prom in the case of prom or om or array is programmable and array is fixed this is how you can remember pal and array is programmable or array is fixed pla reverse your return nothing but complex nothing but and array is programmable as well as or array is programmable so based on this you please go through the option in the first option what they are given is pal is a special case of pla correct it's a correct statement let us get into the second option what they are given is pal and array is programmable or array is fixed this statement is correct but they are asking for incorrect statement right so in the third option what they are given is or array is programmable and and array is fixed this is for p rom not for pal so the corresponding option that is going to follow is option c ninth question you see what they are asking is the definition of satellite communication we know that satellite communication is a power limited communication what do you mean by power limited communication very very important now look at the things from the earth station or the ground station you can transmit any amount of power of your choice and any frequency of your choice but from the satellite if you want to send the information the satellite for the satellite main source of energy is what solar so in the case of solar in the case of solar the power generated is a less in number so we are going to restrict on the power but we are going to increase the frequency why you are going to increase the frequency means a common antenna we are going to use for transmitting nothing but uplink as well as downlink so when we are going to make use of common antenna at that time same frequency if you are using then the message will be lost or message overlapping will be there so we are going to make use of different frequencies so uplink frequency we are going to keep a low value and downlink we are going to increase or we are going to keep an higher value right 
So this satellite communication is referred as what? Power limited communication. So based on this, let us attend this question. So look at the things. In the case of downlink, we are going to consider 935 to 960 megahertz. Not a problem. So for one, it will be four. For A, it will be four. In the case of GSM uplink, it will be 892 915 megahertz. Okay, no problem. See, in nowadays we are having YouTube, Insta, uh, Instagram, all those things. But say suppose five years down the line, if you are taking, we will be uh, listening to FM radio. At that time, the tuning range will be from 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz. 91.1 radio city, 92.7 big FM. So like this, we are going to tune. So all these things are what? Radio broadcasting. So FM radio broadcasting, it is 88 to 108 megahertz. For B, it will be C. And in the case of AM radio broadcasting, it will be in the order of kilohertz. The range will be 535 to 1605 kilohertz. So based on this, if I am solving, so I am going to get option C as correct answer. Let us move on to the 10th question. In the 10th question, what they are asking is to find the current I1. See, there are two loops. Consider this loop as I1 and the other loop as I2. Now, in I2, the direction of I2 is opposite of 4 amperes. So I can tell I2 equals to minus 4 amperes. I2 equals to minus 4 amperes. Now, look at the things. You can solve this uh, by nodal analysis or by mesh analysis. If you are solving by mesh analysis, it will be easy. But one more method is uh, why can't you make a source transformation? See, 6 ohms, uh, 4 amperes, it is a practical current source. Try to convert into a practical voltage source. When you convert into practical voltage source, resistance remains the same. What will be the voltage value? Current multiplied by resistance. So, what I am going to take is the other method in which I am going to substitute I2 equals to minus 4 amperes and then I am going to solve. Now, in the loop I1, if I am writing the KVL, uh, raise I am going to take it as positive, drop I am going to take it as negative. The current is flowing from minus to plus, plus to minus, plus to minus, plus to minus. A uh, raise means what positive I am going to take, which is uh, 62 minus 5 times of I1 minus 16 minus 6 times of one current is uh, downwards that is I1, another current is flowing upwards that is I2, resultant current is flowing downwards, nothing but what? I1 difference I2, I1 difference I2. So here on substituting I2 equals to minus 4, what I'm going to get is 22 equals to 11 times of I1. So the value of I1 will be 2 amperes. The option that is going to follow is option 2 is correct. Let us move on to the 11th question. See, in this, what they are asking is to find the power that is being uh, dissipated across uh, the resistors in a uh, descending order. Nothing but I to low, we have to mention. Say, suppose, what is the equation for finding the power across the resistor? It is V times of I, V square divided by R or I square times of R. This is the power that is uh, uh, being uh, dissipated across the resistor and this is how you are going to calculate. They have mentioned Ra value equals to 4 ohms, R2 equals to 2 ohms, R3 nothing but Rc equals to 4 ohms and Rd equals to 12 ohms. Now, you can solve this with the help of uh, nodal analysis or with the help of mess analysis. I am going to prefer nodal analysis. See, I am going to find the node voltage, say suppose if I want to find the voltage, the power that is being dissipated across RC, which is uh, the difference in voltage uh, potentials, take a square of it divided by that resistance. That's it. So we will be having two nodes. This is one of the principal node and here you will be having one more principal node. One of the principal node need to be connected to the least potential or the ground potential. With respect to this node, this uh, node voltage is a Vx. Here, you can take all the currents are leaving, 
or all the currents are entering or you can take some of the currents are entering and some of the uh, currents are leaving. Now look at the things. In this example, I have assumed all the currents are leaving. Now what is this current? What is the left, leftward current? It is flowing from Vx to 40. So it is Vx minus 40 divided by the resistance that is involved is a 6. Plus what is the bottom current? It is a Vx minus 12 divided by 4. What is the right side current you are going to get? Vx plus 24 all divided by 12. Here 12 is the LCM. So what are you going to get? 2 times of Vx minus 80 plus 3 times of Vx minus 36 plus Vx plus 24 which is equals to 0. On solving I am going to get a Vx value will be equals to 15.33. When Vx equals to 15.33 actual current is flowing from left to right not from right to left. Why? This node potential is 40 and this is a Vx. This is a simple change what you have to go through. What is the voltage drop across 4 and 2 ohms? Because it is connected in series. It is a difference of 15.33 uh, to 40, which is 24.67 volts. What is the power that is being dissipated? Take a voltage square, negative will become positive. Power is uh, dissipated across the resistor. So it is 24.67 square divided by 6 which is equals to 101.43. This is the collective power that is being dissipated across a 4 ohm resistor and 2 ohm resistor. Now across 2 ohm resistor say suppose a x watts of power is being dissipated across 4 ohms it will be 2x. So collectively it is a 3x. So 3x will be equals to 101.43. So what is a 2x which is a power across a 4 ohms which is a power that is being dissipated across the resistor RA which yields to 67.62 watts. Now what is the power that is being dissipated across RB which is a 33.81 watts. Now let us calculate what is the power that is being dissipated across RC. So the voltage square will be 15.33 minus 12 take a square of it divided by that resistance value that is 4 which is a 2.77 watts. If I am talking about uh, the power that is being dissipated across RD which is a Vx plus 24 all divided by 12. A Vx of 15.33 plus 24 take a square of it divided by 12 which is 128.9 watts. If I am arranging in a decreasing order I to low then it should be first it will be across RD then it should be RA then it should be across RB then it should be across RC. So it should be DABC. D A B C. The suitable option that is going to follow is option 3 is correct. D A B C. Able to follow? So these two questions are from network analysis. Such a simple question they have asked. In the 12th question what they are asking is what will be the status of 8051 microcontroller after the execution of the following instruction. Move A comma 3 F H. What is the value of A you are going to get? 3 F H you are going to get. For this you are going to add, for this you are going to add a D3H to it. What is the contents of flux they are asking? Let me convert into, let me convert into a binary. 3 you are going to write it as 0011, F you are going to write it as 1111, right? D, for C it is 1100, for D it is 1101, 3 it is 0011, that's it. Perform addition. What is 1 plus 1? 2. 2 how are you going to write? 1 0. Sum is 0 carry is 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1? 3. 3 how are you going to write? 1 carry over here. 1 plus 1? 0 1. 1 plus 1? 0 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1? 3. 1 plus 1? 0 1. 0 1. 0 carry that is being generated out of the MSP bit that is defined as a carry flag. Carry flag contents what you are going to get? 1. Carry flag contents you are going to get it as 1. So option A is eliminated. Next the carry that is being generated from lower nibble to upper nibble lower 4 bits to 5th bit that one you are going to define it as auxiliary carry. So in this auxiliary carry value will be equals to 1. Auxiliary carry will be equals to 1. Option C is going to follow. 
overflow flag whenever you are going to perform a signed addition or a signed subtraction at that time only you are going to talk about overflow flag so it's a conceptual overflow whenever you are going to add a positive number with a positive number result is negative overflow is occurred or you whenever you are going to add a negative number with a negative number result is positive overflow is occurred whenever you are going to add a positive number with a negative number overflow will never occur these things are important you have to remember so in the case of parity flag how many ones are there in this there are two number of ones there are two number of ones so it is e1 parity so it is e1 parity what is the parity flag contents parity flag will be equals to zero parity flag will be equals to zero which option it is going to follow option 3 is correct option 3 is correct let us move on to the 13th question such a simple question from control system signal flow graph they have asked in this what they are asking is uh, we have to find the transfer function of the given signal flow graph you please observe with the things what is the definition of the output node all the branch all the branches should be tending into it tending into it input node means it should be away input node means it should be away look at the things x5 d is a tending into but g it is out of so x5 can't be an output node one of the demerit in the case of Mason's gain formula what you are going to do connect one more node with the gain of one assume that one node is x6 now what is the value of x6 which is same as x5 why the gain here is 1. The gain here is 1. So, x5 to x1 output uh, Laplace transform to input Laplace transform. That is how transfer function is defined. x6 to x1 which is same as x5 to x1 which is given as in the forward path. What is the forward path you are having? A, B, C, D into 1 minus of whether is there any loop that is uh, not touching no right so it is zero whole divided by one minus of individual loop in you're going to write individual loop gain this is a be plus cf plus dg three loops are there plus is there any two non touching loops yes right be and dg is not sharing a common node so it is B E D G minus is there any three non touching loops? No, right? So stop it over there. So A B C D into 1 minus 0 is what? A B C D only. Whole divided by 1 minus of individual loops plus or two non touching loops. So the corresponding option that's going to follow is option 3 is correct. Option 3 is correct. 14th question is based on microprocessor 8086 such, such a simple question they have asked see immediate addressing move ch comma 3ah for a it is 3 you got the answer you got the answer this one we have already discussed the purpose of a bx register right so for a it is 3 a register indirect addressing means what a move within the braces bx comma cl then base index addressing will be having si and di those are index register right and base relative addressing is what you are going to uh, mention a number say here they have mentioned it as 04h right so for this the corresponding option that is going to follow is option 2 is correct in the 15th question what they are asking is to find the fan out of a ttl nand gate how we are going to define fan, fan out in terms of voltage or current it is very very important till now in exams they have spoken with respect to voltages but in this exam they have spoken with respect to currents also so this is important some sort of trickiness they have included now let me assume first circuit it is driven by a power supply see uh, let me assume the voltage is varying from 0 to 5 volts any voltage which is less than 0.5 i am going to treat it as low state any voltage which is greater than 4.5 i am going to treat it as high state so this is defined as a voh 
and this is defined as the allowable noise in the first state is a 0.5 volts. Similarly, this circuit is driving the next one. This circuit is driving the next one. So, the wire is going to offer the resistance and inductance also will be there and capacitance will also be there. So, there is a noise that is being included. So, what is the allowable noise that is uh, permitted in this uh, circuit so that any voltage greater than this is treated as a I state that is VIH. Any voltage which is uh, less than which is uh, less than this point, I am going to treat it as VIL. The corresponding, for the corresponding voltages, what is the current that you are getting? So, that current, they are going to denote it as IOH. This is IIH. And this is IOL. And this is IIL. What is the amount of noise that is being permitted? It is noise margin since it is an I state I am going to write it as NMH. Here we are defining for a low state so it is NML. It is NML. Right. So this I state noise margin is defined as I state noise margin I state noise margin is defined as IOH to IIH ratio you are going to take what is the value you are going to have 400 micro divided by 20 micro so which is a 20 which is a 20 this is one value and in the next value we have to define low state noise margin low state noise margin it is defined as the ratio of IOL to IIL which is a 16 milli divided by 0.4 milli which is a 40 which is 40 what is the noise margin in this circuit one value is 20 and the second value is 40 out of this you are going to take a minimum one so it is 20 option 2 is going to follow option 2 is going to follow in the 16th question what they are asking is arrange the following logic families in increasing order of power dissipation per kit. Whenever we are going to talk about the power dissipation, CMOS is going to offer lows, low power dissipation. I will be ECL. Based on this, we have to arrange. In the case of CMOS, it should be in the first part. Why? Ascending order, lower to higher. So, maximum power dissipation will be across ECL. So, for D, D should come first, a last should be B. So, it is a D, C, A, B. Option 3 is going to follow. Option 3 is going to follow. What is the value? What is the value? That one also you have to remember. So, for 16th question, option 3 is going to follow. What address is assigned to 128 bytes of RAM inside the 8051 microcontroller? The assigned address is a 00H to 7FH. Also, you have to remember the bank address also. Right? SRF registers will be having bank 0, bank 1, bank 2, bank 3. What is the address that is specified? And apart from bank, what and all the things you will be having? What are the addresses of it? You have to go through it. So, for the 17th question, corresponding option is option B that is 00H to 7FH. For 18th question, what they are asking is, what is the value of resistance need to be connected across A, B so that a maximum power is transferred? So, for maximum power that is being transferred, let us make use of a Thevenin's resistance or Norton's, in it, Norton's resistance. Looking at this end, we are having only the resistance part. So, whatever the resistance we are going to call or we are going to see that the resistance I am going to call it as Thevenin's resistance or you can call it as Norton's resistance also. If it is a, if you are having an inductor capacitor, you are going to call it as a Norton's impedance or a Thevenin's impedance. Since all the elements are resistance, so I am going to call it as a Thevenin's resistance or Norton's resistance. How we are going to find? 
see voltage source what and all the things you will be having you have to treat it as a short circuit you have to de-energize it by short circuiting it similarly you are having the current source means what you have to open circuit it so 40 ohms is there short circuit it when you short circuit the 40 volts battery then you will be having this a 12 ohm and 3 ohm which is connected in series and not in parallel why 10 ohms is there so this a 12 ohms and 3 ohms are connected in a series which is in parallel with the 10 ohms which is in parallel with the 10 ohms this entire combination is in series with the 5 ohms this entire combination is in series with the 5 ohms what is 12 plus 3 15 15 in parallel with the 10 15 in parallel with the 10 see 15 multiplied by 10 is what 150 15 plus 10 is what 25 plus 5 that's it 25 once at 25 six times so 6 plus 5 will be 11 ohms 6 plus 5 will be 11 ohms the corresponding option that's going to follow is option 2 is correct 19th question this question is based on rx criteria what they're asking is what is the value of k when the system is a marginal stable system what is the value of k when the system is marginal stable system at that time we are going to equate it to zero what element you are going to equate it to zero what element you are going to equate it to greater than zero for a stable system less than zero for unstable system important for that let me uh, sketch or let me uh, write the rh table s power 4 s power 3 s square s power 1 and then s power 0 let me write the coefficients we'll be having 1 4 4 3 k 4 times of 4 is what 16 minus 3 divided by 4 which is equals to 13 divided by 13 divided by 4. Next, uh, look at the things. Here, this value, how we are going to find 4 times of k minus 1 times of 0 divided by 4. Or, just drag this element like this. You are going to get k. You are going to get k. Next, uh, 13 times of 4 into 3 minus uh, 4k minus 4k divided by 13 by 4 divided by 13 by 4 13 by 4 now this element you equate it to 0 for marginal stable system call that k as k marginal that's it so when I am uh, equating this element, what I am going to get? 13 3 is 39 divided by 4 minus 4k which is equals to 0. Call this k as k marginal. Call this k as k marginal. 39, sending this term on the right side, I am going to get 16 times of k marginal. What is the value of k marginal you are going to get? 39 divided by 16 this is the value of k marginal this is the value of k marginal right which option is going to follow option d is correct 39 divided by 16 39 divided by 16 for the 20th question in the list one they have talked about the type of circuit in the list two they have talked about the types of amplifier now we'll look at the things sir I'm going to display a sheet you can call by several names voltage control voltage source is also referred as what voltage amplifier is also referred as what voltage amplifier similarly current control current source is also referred as what current amplifier it is also referred as what current amplifier now look at the things in the case of voltage control voltage source output side you are going to sample it nothing but voltage sampling input side you are going to mix it so it is a voltage mixing output side you're going to perform a shunt operation input side you're going to perform series operation so it is also referred as what input side series output side shunt 
series shunt negative feedback. The other way is output side voltage sampling, input side voltage mixing negative feedback. The other way is voltage sampling, series mixing negative feedback. Voltage, voltage output side voltage, input side voltage, voltage, voltage negative feedback. Output side it is voltage, input side you are going to mix it series, voltage a series negative feedback. All these ter terms are there, terminologies you have to remember. So for A it is a 3, for D it is a 2. Now look at the things, current controlled voltage source. So it is a V divided by I. So it is a V divided by I, like this v, you can able to remember. So V divided by I means what a resistance. So current controlled voltage source is referred as what a trans resistance amplifier. Current controlled voltage source is referred as what trans resistance amplifier. So for B it is 1, for B it is 1. Then voltage controlled current source, so I divided by V, nothing but what trans conductance. So for C, it is a 4. The option that is going to follow is option 3. Option 3, very, very important. 21st question, this question is also from network analysis. Such a simple questions they have asked from network analysis. What they are asking is, find the terminal's voltage for the circuit given below. What is the current IB? IB equals to 20 divided by 2K. 20 divided by 2k which is uh, how much a uh, 10 milliamperes you're going to get this is a dependent current source so this entire current has to flow through 1 kilo ohms so what is this value so it is 30 multiplied by ib into what is the resistance 1 kilo this is what voltage across the resistance uh, that voltage is also called as what a thevenians voltage 30 times of what is the value of ib 10 milli into 1 kilo which is vth milli and kilo is going to get cancelled the left out value is a 300 volts the left out value is 300 volts so the voltage uh, drop across this element is or across this 1 kilo ohm is 300 volts. Option 3 is going to follow. First, in the 22nd question, what they are asking is, so in the list 1, they have given some of the IC name, and in the list 2, they have given IC number. We have to go for match the following. Now, programmable peripheral input output port, it is a 8255. So, for A, it is a 3 option a and option d is eliminated first and fourth option is eliminated now u sort so for u sort we are going to make use of which ic it is a ic8251 we are going to use so for d it is a one so for d it is one programmable internal timer it is a 8253 and programmable interrupt controller it is a 8259 8259 so the suitable option that is going to follow is option 3 is correct simple question they have asked 23rd question we have to match the following with the symbols see first one it is a thyristor or in short you are going to call it as an SCR several versions of thyristor will be there one of the default version will be an SCR in the case of SCR already we have discussed in this video we will be applying the no voltages across anode to cathode. You require huge voltage in order to forward bias that junction. What is that junction? J2. Anyway, J1 and J3 will be forward bias, but J2 will be in the forward blocking state. In order to overcome it, what we are going to do is apply more voltage across anode to cathode or the other way is make use of gate pulse. Make use of gate pulse. So for A, it is 4. For A, it is 4. Light activated SCR. You don't want to make use of a gate pulse means uh, make use of a light. So, for uh, D, you are going to get 1. So, for D, you are going to get 1. Next, uh, silicon control switch. You will be having uh, 2 gates. You will be having 2 gates. And silicon unilateral switch, it is uh, 2. So, for C, it is uh, 2. And for 2, it is 3. 
So the corresponding option that is going to follow is option D is correct. In 24th question what they are asking is in radio detection and ranging in short a radar we are going to tell if the transmitted frequency is F0 and uh, the radial uh, target velocity is V then the shift in frequency also referred as the Doppler frequency is given by. So it is given by 2V divided by lambda. What is a lambda? Lambda equals to C divided by F. So it is 2V F0 divided by C. 2V F0 divided by C. So the corresponding option that is going to follow is uh, option 1 is correct. Option 1 is correct. In 25th question, see this question is from instrumentation. Till now if you are not like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. In the 25th question, what they are asking is the term backlash used in instrumentation means. So it is the maximum distance or the angle through which any part of a mechanical system may be moved without causing any movement in the next part. Right? Straight away they have asked with the definition. So friends, till here we have discussed from question number 1 to question number 25. If you are having any doubts, please call on the number that is given below or put your variable comments in the comment section. If you have followed with the solution lecture, please give it a big thumbs up. Also share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel Craving Yarn. All the best for exams. Thank you. For test series, make use of cravingyarn.com.